And I'm going to talk about the, um, some kind of innovation that we have been trying to implement as far as uh, professional practice or practicum, as we sometimes call it, is concerned. Uh, what the role of a practicum uh, could actually be in translator education and how to redesign it to make it uh, more useful, to make it more compatible with the curriculum. In fact, how to reorganize the curriculum so that uh, the curriculum uses feeds from the practice rather than the other way around. Uh, there is, uh, of course, the theoretical background to our work. Uh, we strongly believe that translator uh, uh, education should be in line uh, with the anthrop anthropocentric theory of language acquisition, within which uh, languages are not actually taught and professional skills are not actually taught, but rather learners, trainees, student translators, um, um, we need to create conditions for them for uh, language production languages to emerge, to appear uh, as a result of their own needs. Uh, we are very much in favor of multi-componential theory of translator competence, Anthony Pym and others, uh, where we break down translator competence into uh, separate components and we try to cater for them at different moments of the whole five-year curriculum. Uh, all those concepts uh, that are well established in language learning and language Okay. Uh, all those yes, all those concepts, all those concepts that are established in language acquisition, such as social constructivism, learning by doing, uh, uh, learner autonomy, uh, learner empowerment, uh, we tried also to implement them in translator education context. Uh, and we strongly believe that um, translator education should take place in the task-based approach uh, and in collaborative learning approach. And I will show to you how we do that at Maria Curie Skłodowska University at Applied Linguistics Department. Applied Linguistics means different things for different people across the world. In Poland, Applied Linguistics, Prekładnaya Linguistika, uh, or something like this in Russian, uh, means a double language program with a high level of proficiency in two languages with very practical orientation uh, of the curriculum oriented at translator, interpreter, teacher training within the two languages with uh, mainly practical courses, uh, practical language uh, teaching courses, uh, practical language uh, study, uh, and translation interpretation courses with a minimal role of culture, linguistics, uh, pretty much almost nothing as far as literature is concerned, which are characteristic of uh, philology departments. So uh, we are very much different from a standard philology department, modern languages department, and this is what applied linguistics uh, means in Poland. Uh, our department trains translators and interpreters in two foreign languages, uh, English and German, French, Russian, Spanish and Portuguese. Uh, English and Portuguese, I think we are the only institution in Poland that does translator and interpreter training within this language pair. Uh, English and Spanish, I think we are one of the two. Uh, together with the University of Warsaw. So this is uh, a really kind of um, challenging program that we are trying to, uh, to pursue. Uh, within that program, of course, just as I said, most attention devoted to translate and interpreter training. And this means that uh, translator training starts from the very first day of the very first year. And uh, of course, it starts with relatively simple tasks with sight translation, later on proceeding to consecutive translation. And it's only in the final years, in the final years of the graduate program that we go to simultaneous interpretation. Uh, same with written translation. We start with general texts, then come uh, utility texts, websites, uh, specialist texts, and it's only in the final years of the graduate program that students get to artistic texts. 
uh, media translation, uh, a lot of audiovisual translation, subtitling and dubbing and voiceover also in the graduate program. And all of these would not be possible without uh, computer assisted translation tools. So a little bit of training in CAT tools is done as well. Uh, but today I'm mostly interested in uh, the practicum and I would like to talk to you uh, about the translator practicum. Um, these are the learning objectives for translator practicum uh, established based on different guidelines, most importantly, the model of Pacta Group and um, uh, European Masters in Translation, even though we are not part of the program. Uh, and of course, if you look at uh, these objectives, uh, it becomes clear that a trainee a uh, translator should know, <coughs> should have certain elements of knowledge, know how to prepare for the translation task, know the criteria for assessment of translations, know the uh, sources of information, uh, know the legal regulations of the translation industry, but more importantly, uh, the ability to translate not only individually, but also in a group to manage, to act as a leader, to assess efficiency of one's own actions, to manage the translation task, to do that according to quality requirements, uh, and to be able to um, uh, understand both independent actions and to collaborate with others while translating. So these are, of course, the uh, learning objectives that uh, are gradually or strive to be gradually accomplished throughout the five-year program, three plus two. Uh, and the practicum is an important part of this achievement. However, uh, practicum Translator practicum is not that easy to organize. And the first 15 years of our existence, we uh, uh, were founded in 2001, and uh, pretty much until 2013, 14, um, the practicum uh, was not really given its proper uh, role uh, as we would like to see it. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, this first uh, stage of our existence uh, showed uh, relatively uh, low satisfaction of students uh, with translator practicum quality. Uh, this was not only our problem. This slide refers to uh, the findings of the uh, study conducted within um, practicum, uh, evaluation of practicum in the entire university. And uh, as you can see, uh, these are certain problems that are not only specific to foreign languages, but uh, uh, the problems of finding employers, uh, keeping them attracting, maintaining cooperation, the problem of uh, evaluation of practicum, the problem of uh, mechanisms that would encourage university supervisors to, uh, to um, try to raise the quality of the practicum are common for all uh, faculties. Uh, as far as our own internal evaluation is concerned, uh, uh, in this uh, first phase of our operation, um, the practicum was left pretty much to the initiative of individual students. This meant that they uh, uh, often found uh, practicum offering institutions that um, had um, that were of highly diversified nature and the translation tasks were incomparable. Uh, the system was calculated as hours and of course at different institutions the workload could differ quite a lot. Different institutions uh, that were not translation agencies, but that were, for instance, companies uh, from the market, uh, rarely gave feedback on translations given uh, uh, feedback on translations to trainees, which was, of course, another problem that we wanted to uh, solve. Uh, whenever translation agencies were involved, the activities, the forms of work were often of low quality and low attractiveness, such as online discussions over terminology instead of actual translations. So we wanted to do something about that. Uh, also, uh, first of all, in order to raise the uh, quality of practicum, uh, to um, do that, to organize the practicum throughout the academic year and not relegate it to holiday, 
uh, this is not something that um, that uh, universities are expected to do. Um, we also had to meet the legal obligation that raised the amount of practicum from three months at BA level to six months uh, throughout the three years. So quite a lot, quite a big uh, increase in the amount of practical training. Uh, but we also wanted to design the practicum curriculum in such a way that we integrated with the study program that the two areas are really well uh, supported, that they support each other quite well. Of course, doing that in a mutually beneficial relationship with practicum offering institutions. Um, and the major directions of this practicum reform, which we started around 2015, and uh, we are still pretty much in the process. Um, rather than focusing on translation agencies as POIs, practicum offering institutions, uh, we uh, targeted NGOs, foundations, institutions of culture, uh, the uh, units of the municipality of Lublin, um, using both personal networks to establish this database of quality POIs, as well as encouraging students uh, to be active seekers, but also evaluators POIs. We evaluated POIs before students were assigned practicum there, uh, which was already an important change. Uh, we wanted to diversify the range of translation tasks we wanted to put the practicum in the context of real life tasks rather than hypothetical discussions over terminology, for instance. And of course, we wanted to build the, the raise the prestige of the department of applied, applied linguistics department as a high quality translator training institution. So uh, what uh, we managed to do, gather the portfolio of practicum offering institutions, uh, that is relatively diversified. Um, we also, in this way, at least to some extent, opened the university to, to different areas of the social and economic surrounding. Uh, what is still to be done much more is increasing the amount of translation jobs inside the university, so internal uh, practicum. Uh, doing more for uh, other faculties, other uh, institutes uh, inside the university. Uh, we decided to avoid collaboration with translation agencies, uh, also because translation agencies saw the practicum and trainees, translator trainees, as a way to uh, gain greater share of the market by uh, putting lower uh, lower uh, uh, by, by winning contracts uh, um, by exploiting uh, uh, students to a certain extent. And of course, we wanted to the, those POIs that um, we uh, evaluated as uh, high quality as uh, provide feedback uh, to our students, uh, to our student trainees, we wanted to establish a more long lasting cooperation with them, uh, uh, encouraging the rector of the university, the dean, uh, to sign contracts or letters of intent. Uh, these are uh, some of uh, our current POIs. We are particularly proud with the cooperation with film distributors, film festival organizers, with uh, NGOs, with uh, local radio and TV stations. Uh, institutions of culture, museums, but also local authorities. The municipality of Lublin tries to attract foreign investors and uh, they present the Lublin as the city with great economic uh, academic potential. And this academic potential is demonstrated through uh, by trilingual uh, graduates of applied linguistics uh, that are quite uh, uh, capable of switching between those two, three, sometimes even four languages that they know at relatively high level. You can see uh, some of our students uh, at work. You can see also some of the uh, some of the pictures from some of the events transla that they translated at. Um, just as I said, uh, an important thing to be done uh, that is currently underway, although more work is needed in this respect, is expanding 
the practicum, the internal practicum, that is uh, expanding the range of uh, language services provided by students to other uh, uh, units of the university, uh, conference interpretation services, translating of abstracts or authors' bio notes, or proofreading conference presentations for the faculty. Of course, this has to be done uh, only with the best students, best graduate students, and only within those faculties which are relatively close to the students' um, expected um, um, terminology, um, let's say, the, the terminology that they can be familiar with, that is uh, humanities, pedagogy, psychology, and economics. Um, some of the things we've been uh, working on, of course, uh, the idea of such project uh, uh, groups uh, established for particular POIs uh, demands um, certain technological solutions, demands certain uh, workflow solutions as well. So uh, uh, one thing was, of course, to uh, come up with some kind of uh, online platform. Uh, too big a word, of course, using um, uh, Google Forms and Google Drives uh, uh, authored in such a way that they really provided the um, uh, useful environment for collaborative translations, terminology management within particular translation projects. Um, also, in terms of glossary keeping, uh, maintaining, completing, verifying glossaries, the second important thing was grading roles and responsibilities, uh, making up project groups of students of different years, both graduate, undergraduate, both finishing studies and starting studies, but distinguishing roles and distinguishing responsibilities, as you will see in a while. And the third important thing, um, adapting or perhaps not adapting, filling the content the thematic content of selected translation subjects, mainly general text translation, site translation, conference interpretation, to shoot the topics of planned conferences to be interpreted by our student uh, teachers. Uh, I said that uh, the uh, problem with the previous system was also that it was um, calculated by hours credits were given on the basis of hours, we changed that into a task-oriented approach where, as you can see, different translation jobs have different uh, um, number of points that are weighted against one another, and uh, students collect points, uh, a portfolio of translation jobs collecting points, adding up to 150 points throughout the whole three year curriculum uh, uh, from different POIs. Just as I said, grading roles and responsibilities was also an important uh, um, innovation that we were trying to introduce. Uh, and those roles are most importantly, the coordinator, where uh, <coughs> uh, a graduate student specially commissioned by the staff um, uh, is responsible for contacting POI, submitting translations, monitoring translators in the group, assigning particular tra trainees with different kinds of tasks that you can see here at the bottom. The most important, the most responsible role, of course. Uh, another responsible role, editor quality officer, also reserved for graduate students in the project group. Uh, uh, such a person takes part in collaborative translation, uh, evaluates the translation, makes necessary corrections, prepares the final version in cooperation with the student translator. And again, uh, there is uh, some kind of special calculation for those different roles, because they are, of course, of different, um, of different weight as far as responsibility is concerned. Undergraduate students might uh, function quite well in much less, uh, less uh, important roles uh, or less prominent in terms of translation, but still important for the whole project group. Uh, a terminology or reference text researcher responsible for finding texts on the same topic, uh, make extracting terminology from the uh, texts 
assigned for translation, uh, completing a glossary, maintaining a database of reference texts, made database of glossaries. Uh, the idea is, of course, that those researchers, uh, those low uh, rank, let's say, uh, members of project groups uh, get promoted to higher ranks once those coordinators or quality officers or translators uh, graduate and uh, leave the university. So it's a kind of experience in which people get promoted throughout the, those project groups, if of course they want to stay with those project groups, because the choice of practicum uh, institutions is free to students. The final innovation that we are currently implementing, yes, I'm, and this I'm, is- I'm, I'm very sorry, dear Yaraslav, I'm very sorry. We, we wrote to you, yeah, in the chat personally, but I suppose you didn't see yes. that. Yeah, you have just two minutes. Okay, two minutes is fine. This is uh, last but one slide. So uh, the final innovation is uh, changing the curriculum in such a way that uh, we got rid of the traditional BA dissertation writing and defending in favor of a practical project that was uh, that is to be prepared during the practicum, uh, that is to be presented and defended to the jury. And on the basis of this project, the BA title is to be conferred. And this is from from the next year on, uh, a very recent innovation. And we hope that this final solution will give an even greater importance to practicum as the natural context for the preparation of those BA projects. So uh, I think that uh, I'm pretty much in time. So uh, thank you for uh, your attention. And um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Also, feel free to email me, contact me if anybody desires uh, to receive the presentation. Of course, I'm more than happy to do that, unless, of course, you as the organizers have some way of sharing these. Thank you very much. и очень практический uh, доклад. Uh, конечно же, всегда интересно слушать о том, что непосредственно происходит на образовательных программах. Uh, тем более, что мы очень часто встречаем вузы, где совместно с польскими коллегами у нас есть uh, программы двойных дипломов. Например, uh, я знаю такую программу в uh, Московском uh, педагогическом государственном университете, где обучаются переводчики. Поэтому мы uh, очень uh, благодарны за то, что вы поделились с нами uh, живой uh, и очень актуальной uh, информацией. Большое я спасибо. Думаю, я думаю, коллеги, что мы с вами построим так. Мы будем следить за регламентом, чтобы у нас все доклады прошли. Да, вы, пожалуйста, фиксируйте свои э, вопросы, то есть что непосредственно э, заинтересовало. И я буду стараться, чтобы нам хватило времени в конце все-таки пообщаться. Да, мы пришли не только послушать друг друга, но конференции всегда были местом общения. То есть мы не хотели бы, чтобы онлайн формат нам помешал это сделать. Да? Поэтому э, все какие-то такие насущные вещи, пожалуйста, помечайте себе. И после последнего доклада мы непременно с вами Обсудим. А сейчас я бы хотела uh, предоставить слово. Now I would like to give the floor to our colleague from Voronezh State University, Anna Alexandrovna Isaeva. She will speak about her experience of working in computer rate translation in the course of finance and law translation. Thank you so much. Is it possible for me to share the presentation? Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, today I would like to speak about um, the translation education. We have spoken about the importance of disciplinary links. Uh, these links are very important. It's important to know that today that in translators uh, have to know how to use computer for translation. It is um, absolutely necessary. Such programs include Trados, MemQ, MemSource, and many other uh, types of them. 
That is why it is very important to increase our knowledge and in, in incorporate new technologies. According to a survey of five-year students, they had certain difficulties uh, when concerned uh, working in CAT systems in translation services. And we had to explain it to them. They had this course in the seventh um, term, and some of them forgot how to use these programs. And as we know that many of such programs are pretty expensive, and we can't say that not all of them may purchase them. As and our graduates um, are supposed to have this course, and this quality to today is one of the most urgent. That is why we try to give a new impetus to using computer technologies for uh, law translation. And we will try to explain the same by the following uh, thing. This type of translation is very relevant and such kind of um, translation like various treaties, um, accords, complaints um, are very easy for translate uh, in, in CAD systems. Um, because there are, there are many cliches and terms. And we would like to know that working in CAT uh, systems allows you to translate various kinds of documents like uh, Word, Excel, uh, PDF documents. Um, and you don't have to change the format of the document. This is very important. And this year, uh, we launched this program in the fourth year. Um, this concerns finance translation and as well as um, law translation. Uh, the both uh, courses had the following curriculum. They try to learn and to explore the themes, the theme, to learn the terminology and all the uh, terms uh, were discussed during their course called economy. Um, and uh, during other courses, the students received more vast experience and knowledge about these terms, and, and we learned them how to translate it. And we learned them how to um, make various glossaries in Excel. And as the students um, were supposed to translate and correct the uh, translation in word, and then we compared um, the documents for the translation memory. You can see this on the slide. Uh, we worked uh, via Tradus mostly, uh, but sometimes we used MemoQ and some other programs. After the corrections, we compared the documents, imported them to the memory uh, translation memory, and uh, launched the project. Uh, we uploaded the translation. Then link it uh, to the translation memory, um, and if you if they have. And we also include here the glossaries uh, of terms. Uh, they could, the program tries to find the equivalence uh, among the terms. And then, of course, we can analyze the document. And this allows us to see the how then the students work by a Tradus, and then we try to verify the quality and assess the quality of the document, maybe find if there are the necessary text with the properties right, and then we launch the, the make the document and that is ready to send it to the client. 
During the five year course, we launched not only various contracts uh, concerning finance, and we include here uh, the phase called correction. Um, the students can make the necessary corrections in the document. They can verify uh, their own documents and the translations of others. But the corrections include uh, grammar, errors, mistakes, um, words, and so on. Moreover, they learn how to make the core uh, of documents, how to search certain terms, not only in dictionaries and in the among the translated documents and online dictionaries. The students can launch the machinery translation. This is not uh, something prohibited. This is a very positive point in Mary translation services. And they even learn how to make the corrections after the computer. And today, this um, is the top third um, service among all translation services. This, following this, uh, the students make the translation memory, translation basis, and of course, this makes their work more rapid, and they accumulate new knowledge and experience for their future professional work. Um, therefore, among um, exploring and studying new theme, uh, we managed to learn, learn the students to use computer for translations, to develop their skills, experience. They learn how to make glossaries. Um, they analyze the text, they learn how to make corrections. And of course, this is very important in the labor market. And thus, the our translations become more professional and more experienced. Thank you. Thank you, Anna Alexandrovna. It was a very informative presentation. It was very interesting, your, all your um, statement. I was trying to recollect how difficult it was in the very beginning to, sp to speak about written translation and automated translation. Many companies um, we believed will learn the out translation, there's how to use computers. I'm very happy that we have reached the consensus and finally we'll learn the students how to make retranslation, not only when as far as con concern the sense, but also um, computers. Um, we know that uh, the topic that you've taken were very difficult. Um, they took, it took a lot of time to uh, find all the terms. Yes, you're right. We see there is a question. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, did you use some additional models like my memory? No, we used the base program. Unfortunately, not all the options that were available could be used. Uh, it was easier to use Memsource, but a bit more difficult in Traders. And we had to work with, with what we had. And we told the students about additional um, possibilities of these programs. Thank you. Yes, we know each other well, and we even worked early. 
Then she lectured in our university in the previous term. Thank you so much, dear colleagues. And now we continue our discussion. And the next statement. Um, and I would like to know that I'm so happy to see these authors, um, these presenters. This is a Donetsk Institute of Social Education and Kiev uh, State University. Dear colleagues, we're happy to see you among us. Of course, you can share your screens. Sholhev Alexey Viktorovich and Parf Olga Viktorovna Parfimovich. The use of the multidirectoral method for education um, of translators and interpreters. Good afternoon. I am Olga. I am from Kiev. And I would like to uh, present my statement. Maybe some of you will find it interesting. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, of course, we all will find it interesting. What is multidirectoral um, methods? Of course, I will speak about it in the end of my statement. So let us, I have um, tried to analyze the work of interpreters in translation services, in interpreters, various facilities. And we came to conclusion that, um, that translator should be able to translate all kind of text uh, to translator. If a translator starts to work in an enterprise, it doesn't necessarily mean that we translate only one kind of document. He will have to work in various fields with various kinds of documents with various delegation. This may be an interpretation maybe medical terms. So a translator and interpreter should be ready for everything. And we try to define uh, these uh, themes um, of translation that we find most relevant. Our colleague has already mentioned them. The first of them, I would like to say that the medical translation is the most popular medicine зум we have developed a method of um, presenting our material as within blocks or modules. What you can see right now, medicine, oil and gas, finance, these are all blocks. And this is about translation. We need a few hours to learn um, the basic um, ideas of educational for different for instance they don't study finance for six months but they get all this information via units uh, on each and every um, area if university is um, in a place where a steel industry is very um, relevant we can pay more attention to this very topic each and every unit of such type can be uh, can consist of subunits. Subunit one, what we would uh, pay attention to, that is um, the main basics of scientific and technical education. Um, I can say that in each and every unit. You can find that, for instance, if the unit of medicine starts, you can see the basic. Um, you should not uh, omit 
the something that is general for these units. It will uh, be remembered better by the students. Uh, the second subunit is uh, specifics of education. For instance, medical geology. That is a new direction that uh, unites two topics, medicine and geology. You will see it later. And the third subunit is practical application of the acquired knowledge. And I will say what we mean by that. Um, I would also like to pay attention to an aspect of uh, um, uh, multi meaning, multiple meaning. For instance, a word deposit. Deposit uh, can be used uh, differently in different spheres. For instance, in medical, in uh, legal. Uh, for instance, it is a banking term. Uh, in medical, it is uh, something about uh, dental plaque. And in geology, it is a uh, deposit of uh, oil, for instance. It is something small and um, it is something big. And if it all is in one field, and when it comes to multiple meanings and uh, interdirection, and I will read it. We used a word of uh, multiple meaning. It is important to pay attention of students that uh, in different fields, we will translate it differently. So students should not remember just one uh, translation uh, in the memory of students who will uh, make sure that student knows that this word has multiple meanings. We have uh, discussed the development of written written speech. Um, Olga Viktorovna said this today, the plenary session that gadgets are now a part of our hands and uh, people should not um, emit written, uh, written uh, speech because uh, a hand and um, written language are connected with the memory and with the brains. And when a person is writing uh, in hand, he or she remembers more. There are different principles of memorizing information when it comes to writing things down. For instance, when we are during lockdown, lockdown we cannot see how students uh, are using information whether with some machines or with some um, translators students have an illusion of uh, easy translation uh, as the result a uh, student cannot correct this uh, electronic translation I'm not saying that in vain. I've understood this problem having worked with people uh, who are currently working on uh, getting a new level of education. Um, they lose their professionalism and the quality of translation. Uh, but I'm not only speaking about this problem. I've seen it. I can see how a person is working without gadgets. And we can see that who should be translating this comprehensive course. We should not be afraid um, of uh, being a translator, a practical translation, translator. For instance, we are academic. Uh, there are some uh, 
people who've been working for 15 years with multiple uh, topics and they should be uh, invited to such conferences. And that is our own experience. Our own experience proved on um, um, I have asked this question and then they said that uh, teachers were united there and it was very lengthy time and the translator who's been working with these topics he or she is almost ready and here comes uh, the workload on the teacher when it comes to practical work for instance uh, these uh, things are prepared by uh, by the professor. Uh, that is, we must remember everything, the theory of translation. It is multiple meanings, new words, um, importance of some grammatical forms, for instance, passive voice, preposition, etc. These are things that go from unit to unit. Here are well, medical geology. These are words which use, should be used here in this subunit. Here is medical geology. Here is retinite. Retinite is in uh, medicine and in geology. Um, it is a part of um, it is we should never um, it is a word in Russian language um, and medicine is ideas um, that's why I'm speaking about it it is my own example I've been working with the commission in green and uh, uh, having translated words uh, for me retinitis was was a revelation here are new words formation we've stumbled across when we were translating a lot of words we faced a problem that um, science is going forward and we have to translate things which are not which do not exist yet but we can translate it because we can suppose we can guess make an educated guess for instance different geological periods for instance i will start from in um, western um, literature it is um, and Russian scientist Stepanin, um, he uh, proposed to call the last period, and it was the end of Okay. Um, a professional in this uh, translation and uh, when this period and it is um, it exists in books and here are different ke chemical elements which should not be 
considered as something опыта бывает переводишь не всегда смотришь произношение слова и когда на устных переводах ты понимаешь представляешь это слово визуально но you can visualize this word but you cannot pronounce it because you understand that you will probably mispronounce it because you haven't checked it up speaking about such things like bromine, chlorine, um, we must uh, pay attention to pronunciation, especially when it comes to interpretation and practical application of the acquired knowledge. These are practical, uh, uh, practical tasks to make sure that we know more. We should not omit uh, the grammatical element from the exercises, for instance, uh, different grammatical exercises to make sure that students remember different grammatical rules. When people come to university, having graduated from university, studying language for six, five years, they don't remember grammatical tasks, but they remember grammar. And if we have a unit of medical translation, we must comply our grammatical translation to the unit we are currently studying. For instance, when, it, when we are studying medicine, all our grammatical exercises should be cons considered uh, in medical terms. It takes up a lot of time, but it's definitely worth it. Thank you for attention. If you have any questions, I will gladly respond. I've been to Russia a lot before the quarantine. I've participated in the translation forum Russia, and I'm also a speaker there. Uh, for the third time, I uh, spoke at uh, Gerson University in St. Petersburg. So. I will sh gladly share my image. Thank you very much. When it comes, unfortunately, we didn't meet each other in St. Petersburg because I know that many of us who are here took part in the conference in St. Petersburg. Maybe some of us will be in uh, Nizhny Novgorod, and we will have a chance to talk to each other. Thank you very much. Give our best regards to Alexei Viktorovich. Call it maybe any of you have questions. I don't see any raised hands. Thank you for examples. It is very valuable. Colleagues, and we are continuing our conference. And here are um, Lisa Vladimirovna Agarova from Ngimo University. And she is going to speak about a new trends in theory, practice, and teaching of translation in online teaching on the example of Zoom platform. That is extremely relevant. Hello, our fellow colleagues, uh, do you hear me? Um, I'm going to speak today about a very, very relevant topic. Um, today, these new tendencies are extremely relevant um, in Russia as well as all over the world. Many countries uh, from the beginning of 2020, uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, transferred all their process on online platforms. Uh, regardless of the experience they had in this uh, format, or the, whether they had uh, 
uh, technical opportunities. Uh, we needed to keep uh, the quality of education at distance. We needed to find uh, the means to maintain the quality and the educational communication. The, um, the proliferation of uh, this inform information communication, digital technologies, the change of uh, state politics vector in higher education, uh, contemporary, um, uh, and we cannot um, fail to mention that the proliferation of online of online education um, led to was um, a the philosophy of education is not only about innovations and technologies. We change the ideological parts of this. The education is different today, um, different from what it was one year or 10 years before. If uh, before we didn't, it was um, something that a teacher used as an additional method. Today, uh, teachers use it as an integral part of his or her work. The specifics of uh, in English, not only relevant, but practically relevant. One of the most relevant matters of uh, um, is um, um, adaptation of uh, tools such as Zoom, which help to maintain the level of educational communication. It is extremely important and should be um, implemented Okay, um, foreign languages studies are uh, based on communicational uh, conception. We cannot integrate it into um, online. It is an innovation and uh, and a challenge for a professor. Today, uh, the priority of professors is to maintain the communication approach to uh, realize uh, the uh, this thesis uh, uh, main becomes extremely important when it comes to different types of teaching uh, or Unique of translation as one of this part is a unique social cognitive communication activity. That is why to form, form and develop uh, translating competences for students is really important, regardless the fact, regardless the way students are studying. They Use. among which we can name such characteristics as uh, special uh, of two languages, um, possibility to interpret uh, the text, uh, knowing the technologies of translation, uh, knowing norms, uh, style, uh, strategies of the translation and uh, some implicit knowledge that is important to interpret um, different uh, topics. That is why it is um, possible to speak to say that uh, the teaching of translation must be approached as uh, in a holistic measure, we should uh, um, not, uh, we should uh, make sure that uh, it should have problem solution approach. Third, we must uh, cover number of questions and tasks 
to control to make sh um, should go outside the program to make sure to encourage students to self-educate. We can use different cloud platforms. One of the most uh, popular platform is Zoom. Zoom allows us to hold lessons online for a small group individually or for all course. It gives um, us opportunity to exchange files, exchange. Um, it um, gives us a chance to control to give feedback to students, and it has a chance of multi-channels uh, aimed at different uh, kinds of speaking activities, including translation. We can use not only traditional but interactive uh, forms of education. For instance, um, uh, we can use um, different approaches. For instance, a uh, professor can use different models uh, with the films, um, with subtitles, adapted for students, um, audio recordings, uh, presentations, or projects, uh, different materials. The use of uh, approaches mentioned before helps to develop all the uh, translated competences for students. Today, we have a lot of tools that are relevant for efficient and result-oriented um, approach to studying, uh, different approaches to st teaching students in during the times of gives us a chance to with, in educational purposes allows us to increase motivation of students and the quality of knowledge of students and the level of uh, communicative and of course this is very important for their future career and that I can draw the following conclusions. First of all, it is obvious that communicative approach is very important, especially uh, when when studying translation uh, in during lockdown. These are imperative. It is uh, the, the second point. This is uh, we can approach it. This is real. And the solutions and platforms are numerous, um, but they have various advantages, and we can reach our key goals. The third point, we can re reaffirm that the use of new technologies is highly prospective, and this would be necessary for increasing their interest. This is crucial for motivating our students and developing their key translational and pro professional skills. Thank you for your attention. You may find my contacts in the end of the uh, slide, and I'm open to cooperation and the exchange of our experience. Thank you. Thank you for your statement. We have been living, literally living uh, in Zoom for a year. And when it comes to its advantages, this is something new and we should discuss these new possibilities and technologies. And for instance, the, um, the the high school of economics is now using so-called teams instead of zoom and thus this allows us to compare these two platforms and we can change these platforms quickly and we may explore and find new platforms 
and I believe he helped us greatly and we will be able to work in all other platforms. Thank you so much. Dear colleagues, do you have any questions that would be really timely? Um, so we believe we will discuss it later. And now we continue our discussion. And I give the floor to Ekaterina Boshko. Um, Ural Federal University, named after Yeltsin, teaching how to erase the toponymic names. Is it that simple? And uh, Ekaterina Mihalna will answer this question. Let's try to make this more simple. I would like to speak about uh, toponymic names. Of course, this is not simple. And today I will focus on teaching how to render it and, of course, about the rendering of toponymic names. And I would like to note that toponym um, is a name of a geographical object. This is one of, um, this may be about any kind of object. It, it may be a village, a city, a territory, a, a state, or, and the system of toponic names includes a great deal of, to, of these names. This is about a country or a region. Um, there are various uh, types of toponic names for various kinds of geographical objects. And of course, these types are numerous. On this um, slide, you can see three criteria for their classification. But there is not a single classification of toponic names. For instance, it's about the The first category about the natural objects and maybe various cities. The second criterion, the size of toponic names. Um, and the third type, it's about the type of the subject, is it a street, a river, a lake, or a village? And of course, the toponymic names may depend on the kind of object, like uh, urbanonyms, um, dreamonyms, and in the universe. So let us try to understand what do we speak about? Is it about translation or rendering? Do we translate toponic names or do we render them? And of course, this topic was very relevant before the COVID pandemic when people traveled a lot. They attend various events. When it comes to recommendations, they are numerous, and we find them on the website of Rosriester. But they date back to 1975. On the other hand, according to Yermolovich, they were only for technical translation, and they have nothing in common with translation. So, so we can speak about translating toponic names only in several cases. There are several equivalents, like Mount Fuji. In Russian, it's different, like Fujiyama, like Place de la Concorde. In this case, we can speak this is translation. In a lot of cases, it's about rendering. And 
Например, Джон Деро. Uh, but of course, if we translate to phonemic names, we may face a number of mistakes. For instance, Sejong uh, Daero. Um, like Tehran Ro. Please try to know that uh, know the difference between the, the South and North Korea. So this is not about translation, this is about rendering. I would like to know that Rendering toponic names is something dif difficult. This is a very vast issue. Sometimes we may use transcription or transliteration. It's, there is no consensus concerning the system of transcription and transliteration. Now, they, these, there are several such systems, like, like the system of uh, ICO, uh, that is used by our national um, foreign service. It's about the fact that um, the Russian letters G, H, um, they do not have an equivalence in the Latin alphabet. In these uh, letters are very much different from our understanding of transliteration. And maybe you you know how it works because you'll have a sport. Another system, the system of Gilerovsky in Starostina. So if we can't use uh, neither transcription nor transliteration, what do we use? And what should we learn our students? When we speak about rendering the toponic names, we speak about studying. There are several skills. The skill of morphogrammatical modification, adding various endings, like Pushkin Street. It is important to know that endings should not sound how the toponic name sounds. If we translate the Patrice Ulitsa Patrice Lumombe, Like the ending here may change the way the word sounds. We speak about the companies. We usually use transcription, but it includes an anthroponym. It may be transliterated. Like the Mayakovsky Central Park. And another method about is called transposition. I try to study the symphonic names of one cities, but I try to make a detailed classification of them. But this classification, um, you see it on this slide. But I would like to know it is important to at school we learn that it's better to say like Pushkin Street, but in English. Uh, 
so we as well as St. Petersburg Union of Russian Translators, who were the first to write this issue. We believe that they should not be transliterated. Another point, there are certain toponic names that are similar, like, like Academicheski region or Academicheski street. So it's very easy to get confused. The following classification, of course, is not full because various local facilities may have their own classification. But it is also important to take into account the aesthetic point of view. Unfortunately, foreigners in Russia will never be able to understand how beautiful the toponic name is. And toponics may, may be used in various forms, like in streets, in, in books and catalogs, in airports, in railway stations, in shops, and of course, sometimes we it's better to translate the toponic name, or maybe sometimes it's enough to transliterate it. So, so we should take into account the following algorithm. They were developed by our regional union of Russian translators. We try to make a description of its the kind of the general term, like what it's a prospect instead of street and avenue. We include the plural or single form, seen whereas in the original language should be changed. Um, Another important point, students should take into account that the name of the organization, its full name, um, you should, they should check it. And it may have a mistake, maybe, and they should not correct this mistake. If the words is similar to an English word, they So this algorithm should be taken into account when learning the students how they render the toponic names. At this point, this advice were very important. And the methods include the following phases. Diagnostics, including theoretical material. Try to include key and less important object. Try to translate. Um, translate right or render, try to find a mistake and describe this mistake, write the correct variant. In the end um, of our study, our students made a project. They translated various websites. They try to compile a route. And then they used the knowledge they received. And of course, um, the students should work themselves. This is very important. This is so-called self-control. And this 
work require the students be very attentive and responsible, self-motivated, and motivated to reach good results. They should understand the importance of their work, and they really, the students really felt they were real translators. And of course, this method should be used when, may be used when translating the toponic names of other cities, objects, and facilities. And of course, this may be useful for professional translators. Of course, there are there is a number of books. And it goes without staying, saying that we should learn our students how to render the deponic names without saying that transcription is the only way of rendering them. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I would like to know, dear colleagues, that we know each one one another for a long time. It's my pleasure to see Mikhail here. She tried to share her professional experience. We met for the first time in 2014 in Yekaterinburg when I attended translation for Russia. And there were very few of professors, but the city welcomed us. Of course. I don't see any raised hands, but I cannot ask whether there's any project going on on your um, thesis. He could have changed the name, the attitude towards changes with the help of St. Petersburg University um, Association of Translators. You have such experience, you've changed everything that was in Yekaterin. We haven't yet thought about going to municipalities and change something that can be changed. Yes, we've been working together with uh, Yekaterinburg when we were preparing to the World Cup in 2018, but one of the biggest obstacles was administrative resource and uh, contractors who think that they know a foreign language better than um, languages, than translators. And it was translated in three different ways, regardless of the different uh, contractual approach we had, we cannot learn, we can teach them, but we, I wish we could do it in the future. Let's join together, colleagues, it is our second city, and in St. Petersburg we managed to do this thanks to the um, in Yekaterinburg, with the help of Yekaterina Mikhailovna, we managed to start the process in Yekaterinburg, and we hope that it will go forward future, and it will be a great example for other states, for other towns. And we are going later, and I would like to, uh, anyone from uh, Technological University, and she will speak about uh, English borings in Russian language issues of representative translation on the lexical level. Irina Vladimirovna, hello, fellow colleagues. Can you hear me? Yes, we can see your presentation and I am starting right now. Okay, let's start. It's great. Hello, fellow colleagues. My name is Leonova Yerina Vladimirovna. And first, I would like to say thank you for your interesting um, reports and to present you my uh, report, um, English borings in the Russian language, issues of representative translation, uh, the matters of uh, 
language contacts are extremely interesting for us scientists for many decades. We have learned it from different perspectives, but I would like to uh, see, to study it from uh, the point of the tactics of uh, translation and analyze the problems that arise from uh, written translation. English language has been uh, one of the biggest, one of the biggest donors of uh, languages and borrowings in the end of the 20th uh, century, in the beginning of the 21st century. And one of the most uh, popular uh, method is uh, trans uh, and uh, semantic coping. However, stylistical studies of anglicisms, of English borrowings in Russian languages are had not been defined yet. For instance, speaker outsourcing its terming uh, Lang, it's uh, jargon. Um, English, uh, English borrowings are uh, always uh, change the condition. For instance, aggressive advertising campaign and ambitious young men have lost their pejorative connotations, and uh, the existence of English borrowings in the English language. They pose a problem, pose a threat to um, education, to translate, to, uh, it is one of the first uh, languages that um, is the most popular all over the world among translators. And that is why this issue is highly relevant. When we define translation and interpretation as um, choosing variants, uh, different variants, and uh, in, and a uh, new uh, translator have to make a choice, which is difficult for them now. Students choose the first, cho first the most obvious choices, and these ideas are uh, can be divided into subjective and objective idea. The first uh, subjective is uh, the law. Um, we would ask why we should translate if something if we don't know the area. When we are speaking about the context of study, we can say that it is um, the responsibility of a student, and that is why these ideas, these reasons are subjective. Objective problem is um, unwillingness of students to uh, think uh, following pseudo-professional um, Since professional competences of uh, translator and interpreter uh, mean uh, understanding of they should uh, pay attention to translation of uh, English words which have been borrowed, especially borrowed over the last few years. And we thought it would be reasonable to create an algorithm which will help to make the translation represent. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that it is concerned about uh, the teaching, how we can solve this or another problem on the lexical level. We need to uh, provide an algorithm to students um, a choice of English borrowings is uh, restrained to the type of text, to the context, and to the area. We need to verify the variance of translations um, according to the criteria of uh, translation. We need to analyze the content of the topic. Next, we need to analyze stylistic uh, uh, and uh, the author's intentions. And uh, the third 
is uh, the context of this word in which this word is used. Uh, we can um, choose uh, extra linguistical context and linguistical context, uh, cultural matters and historical matters. And it is quite obvious that taking into consideration all the criteria and uh, following the algorithm student uh, future translator can make a right choice of uh, translating equivalent wikipedia is used uh, by many students why they chose the word, uh, the wording, and the reference to Wikipedia. Uh, it is um, unacceptable. And here I uh, show the word, the words of one of the founders of Wikipedia and uh, um, link to his project. He, the project. Uh, did meet the expectations and it cannot be considered a source of 100% uh, true uh, information. I would like to show you um, this algorithm. When we see this uh, pair of words, expertise and expertise, student is um, under influence of uh, factors and um, informational uh, space around him. And we think that expertise is the only variant possible. Uh, since the very childhood student um, have always have absorbed 150 years of um, trust and expertise. And after that, this expertise uh, be, is um, by uh, more serious conditions. For instance, here is uh, an invitation to take part in the conference, um, Russian, and, um, and here to, to change this uh, beliefs we uh, propose an algorithm we have already described, but to make the work more uh, efficient, we need to use a table. For instance, that is a, uh, an example from uh, the IMF, and uh, we show the difference between expertise and expertise and you can see how you can uh, show the results of analysis and study we can um, compare the meaning the meaning of, of with the help of thesaurus and dictionaries we are not confined to the dictionaries which are mentioned here um, and um, we show the variants and definitions here. Um, and um, one of the of Russian language rejected by uh, is being used uh, to translate the word expertise and the comparison of these words shows us that we cannot help these words. Special skills and knowledge, uh, we um, next we can show uh, the lack of stylistic marking and shows linguistic and extra linguistics comparison of the exam. And here we can uh, show how it can be formulated in Russia. And uh, uh, there are various kinds of expertise 
which are being used in Russian differently. In English, we can see the use of this word with language with other words with so different context. For instance, we are speaking about documents of organization and uh, below we can see um, text from official report which was placed on the official site and we can see that translators at the IMF uh, managed to uh, transfer the real meaning of this word. We always see, we always hear about these false friends of interpreter, like guide, give, roadmap, tarožna karta. And uh, there are a lot of different variants because they can be different There was a very interesting experiment where I uh, talked to students and we watched uh, when the English uh, word hype was first being used and it was the beginning of the 18th century. It uh, left a great impression on the students and it is also important to teach students like this to make sure that they should understand that hype and hype in English and in Russian are have a gap of many centuries between them. Problem uh, of uh, general topics, this problem also is relevant for different areas of translation. For instance, you can see um, a guide of uh, uh, game localization specialists. Uh, they have under they understood the importance to differentiate between turns and uh, their professional lingo. And we can see different uh, um, ideas they have. Oh, um, I've shown you how they use this word and uh, the real translation. Thus, um, Answering this question, I would like to propose you uh, that um, on the basis of many years of practical work with the students, we understood that first we need to use an algorithm uh, that bases on uh, the method of teaching. Students understand what they should do, open a, a vocabulary, open dictionary, compare words, see how these words are used in context, uh, look it up in the thesaurus and uh, create um, and make their own educated choice of this or that word. So algorithm, thesaurus, context. This journey of young translator can help us to overcome this thoughtless use of words, use of borrowings, where we need them and where we don't, regardless of the type of translation and the type of content. Thank you uh, for attention. I will be happy to answer your questions. Uh, thank you, Irina Vladimir and fellow colleagues. Do you have any questions that are bothering you right now? I don't see any raised hands. We thank you, Irina Vladimirovna, because this uh, uh, algorithm, this uh, algorithm is a great gift for colleagues, especially when it comes to English borrowings. There is a raised hand. Yelena, um, please. Oh, I'm just clapping my hands. 
Oh, I see. I see. I thought it was a signal. We thank you. Коллеги, никто не против, что потом нам дошлют презентацию по почте. Послушайте, Ольга Николаевна, без презентации. Я буду очень признательна. Конечно, давайте, Ольга Николаевна. Не будем формалистами. Хорошо. Итак, тема моего доклада – это политический и новостной дискурс. Lake, I would like to present only one point of view. That we used in the course called the translation of texts of international media, English, the English language. I am a professor of Moscow, uh, of Russian Humanitarian University, the Department of Philology and History, the four year students. And a great deal of results of various studies um, were incorporated. These studies were mostly conducted by foreign researchers of political discourse of the language and translation. It is obvious that a piece of news is very a very important genre. Uh, a piece of news is often taken by people. It's like li enlisting of facts that do not include any connotation, unlike an editorial, for instance, or analytical art article, or some humorous article. But in fact, as many studies indicate, for instance, Fowler von, von Day, uh, the news are a very important instrument of influencing the people and a very important tool for manipulation. And written discourse, of course, is the most important. According to Von Dijk, a written text is taken as a more qualitative, a more qualitative piece of work. It is very important for uh, for people. This is very important for calibrating their point of view and worldview. Fowler, in turn, indicate that. The news discourse is a kind of unseen ideology uh, when the media impose and try to influence the, the public. And that is why I believe it is important to note that his students should be able to differ, to note this um, ideological um, lexical units and ideological language. And before we start to speak about the language, it's important to speak about the selection of information. According to a number of studies, Von Dijk speaks that information may be subjective due to the fact that um, it may be presented as something subjective or objective. For instance, the information may be contradictory. To try to draw the attention of students to the fact of selecting the information, they were proposed to um, analyze the documents, uh, 10 texts in English, of Associated Press, and as well as the Russian media, like Interfax, Ria Novosti, Itartas, and so on. When studying the news media, I try to manage to conclude that um, ideological are the following lexical units, evaluative and con connotation lexical units. This is the most obvious thing. For instance, such words in Russian, 
as terrorist, militant, illegal groups, hooligans, The most illustrative example um, is the news of Western media concerning Donetsk uh, People's Republic. The other lexical unit active and passive constructions and using active or passive construction according to the studies may actualize or not actualize the importance and responsibility for certain actions desirable or undesirable in the earlier works of fowler and his colleagues we see in the example of um, London, like as a semantic category, active and passive construction may influence the sense. The authors conclude when the police, po police and the government is associated with violence and something that caused violence. The, in this case, the media use passive constructions without using the active voice. And on the contrary, the ethnic minorities um, was represented as something negative. In this case, they are represented in the active voice. I would like to know that this ideological function of the passive voice is um, well studied and well is called as passivization of the media language in many um, researchers speak about it the news text is supposed to be the most objective um, and the author is trying to distance the author from his recipient and the third tool used for implications and connotation as of political discourse are the opposition we and they A number of studies concerning this issue were conducted. For instance, like the works, some works indicate that the Western media one day indicates that these out groups are represented in stereotypes or in negative terms as something posing a threat. They are vulnerable and pathetic, according to the Western media. And they believe that these groups should, be, should adapt themselves to our realities and our ideology. In this regard, one day, speaks that this is the egocentric uh, nature of the western media in this regard i would also like to um, note a, another study of about uh, bad and good news it was conducted by the glasgow university uh, on the example of military conflict. During, in this study, the author indicate various 
differences that the those who took part in the events their roles were different on the level of syntaxis lexical level and grammatical level um, the authors did their best to manipulate the recipients and now i would like to say a few words about um, education if we teach translation teach uh, how to translate the news text we should take into account their pragmatical goal and the students should realize that their translation should be related to a given topic and a given situation of course we can't remember about it and can't speak about in all our courses but in the very beginning we could explain that this is important in all their professional activities when working with when working on the news text and it is important to note and the students should remember it they should not be surprised to the fact that they will have to um, be translating maybe not very correct not very word to word or an equivalence they will have to make certain transformation remembering and take into account the situation and the context and the translator should um, take into account the uh, policy of a given agency the students learn how to use transformation like transfer transformation of various um, manipulative phrases The author, I'm sorry, in this regard, I would like to know that we, during our courses, are able to understand that in certain situations it is impo it is impossible to um, make an equivalent translation we should take into account ideological implications and of course i would like to give you another example these are researchers who study translation the translation of news susan basmut and Christine Schaffrin. They launch a great deal of conferences on how we trans should translate the news text. I would like to draw your attention to certain points. Such examples are numerous. Thus, drawing the conclusion, I would like to say that a piece of news is not a neutral discourse. This is something um, having implications and connotations. And our students learning to translate the news discourse should understand that they should be ready to making transformations, uh, they should not be surprised to, they should not be surprised by the pragmatics. I would also like to note 
that the students should be very sensible when it comes to understanding the induced discourse. They should understand and see all the implications and some hidden um, and additional senses. This is very important. This is one of the goals of translation. And our goal is to uh, make the students develop their skills and to see it. And thus, I would like to conclude. And please, I'm ready to answer your questions. Thank you so much, Olga Nikolaevna. Um, I try to remind you of the time. Uh, thank you so much, dear colleagues. Everything we read in the recent studies of Von Dijk, uh, he speaks about the discourse, the political discourse in particular is a kind of an event. It's not a communicative situation. It's not a text in the communicative situation. This is an event. And that is why there are a great deal of details we should take into account. And we, we try to remember Susan Boston. Um, she represents the translation in pollution school. Of course, she said that pragmatics and the pragmatics of the political discourse is very important. Here, translation may play a manipulative function. Uh, and of course, it was very important for us to hear it again. Thank you so much. Dear colleagues, if you allow me, I would like to finish our session of presenting statements. I believe we'll have half an hour for discussion. I try to include this topic to the section 8a. I changed the content of my statement, but I did not change the name. I believe that today the applied translation studies is something we live in, and uh, I believe this is very important. In all your statements, you spoke about this. Uh, translation uh, can be used in practice, and we should and we speak this is a cross disciplinary and multidisciplinary paradigm in all our work. I would like first of all start by by um, saying a few words about the our document. It's very important for us. Every year since the beginning of 2017, uh, we could listen this about this project about professional standard of specialist in translation, and it was announced uh, at this very conference at the round table. And colleague, it's been colleagues, it's been four years. If we take into account that. Uh, We've started speaking about it, and I've uh, presented my uh, this project at the meeting of translators in Russia, and then our colleagues from Krasnoyarsk joined us, and they've been uh, participating in the development of the standard. It's been five years of a uh, big, of great work, our work. Um, we wanted to unite professionals around this project. And uh, when this project was finally approved and registered the, at the Ministry of Legislature, 
uh, you can see the um, that this university is one of the leading uh, developers of this uh, and you can see if you are online you will be able to see the news at all social media dedicated to the professional translation and i wanted to start with this news you can see that um, our multidisciplinary paradigm of our work was in the, was the founding part was the cornerstone of our debate and whether we can uh, consider translator and interpreter as a professional who can um, make any can take up a lot of responsibilities and when this uh, conception was uh, by our, by our interregional team, which consists of more than 30 people, and part of them are experts from the. And when we have confirmed the conception, um, that took place. I would like to announce that uh, in the following days you will see online and on other information resources that in June we will hold the foresight session two. The first one was dedicated to the project, the draft of this document, and the foresight session two will be uh, dedicated to the uh, anniversary of the um, platform and we will try to um, try to envision what what the um, what will be the responsibilities of a translator in the future um, I was that um, 99 percent of everything what exists now in 2019 we thought that it will be and uh, in four years everything already exists the expert content of uh, experts who are in this session since we are looking into inter multidisciplinary competences we can see that it is our major competence since since we don't have a complex uh, holistic uh, programs to prepare uh, translators we have uh, different courses uh, we had one of these projects at the moscow state um, teaching university uh, however this very specialization of uh, applied translantology is not uh, represented here uh, we were really happy when we managed to continue with the, um, the business and the employers take active part in life of universities they've understood that a lot of things are happening here and uh, the representatives of business are going to studies they help our students uh, they have uh, a big, um, they have uh, dedicated units where they uh, work with the trainees and uh, students or they have dedicated people who help to train uh, future employees for them and they can actively participate in it. They um, invite 
uh, translators and the next their educational experience which is also very important for them i would like to focus on scientific uh, competences which are extremely important today in the digital age and all working platforms of our uh, union we speak about and we need to study what's going on we need to find uh, the problems and then with the help of universities and active projects um, make sure that we solve these problems everything is um, a matter of study of applied translatology and this all helps us uh, in implement project-based learning method in our in our uh, work. Uh, speaking about the document where we spoke about um, the disciplinary specialization in translation, and the document uh, has approximately twenty different qualifications and different uh, roles and positions in companies and among these positions in companies we see translation editors not the editors in philological a sense of word but the uh, translators uh, translate but editors in translation we can see terminologists we can see project managers we can see quality specialists and many other just um, audiovisual translations, uh, the translator who handles subtitles, and this document uh, considers different uh, kinds of uh, translation we call localization. And in having accepted multidisciplinary character of translation, we can say that we have two major issues which are important for our students and which are not very thoroughly researched. We can say that though we can, these aspects are um, the modern, the contemporary technological reality and uh, the structure of uh, working process. For instance, we have an association of our, of of uh, translating professors who um, released a book um, on how to organize the translation education process, which was written uh, um, with the employers. The idea of practicum was um, very thoroughly covered in that book. We see fast digitalization of our work in the post-COVID and COVID uh, times, but I have left here um, that is why we um, keep this we should never forget that uh, the biggest uh, value of uh, translation is its sense and we are always balancing I believe that project-based education helps us to maintain balance quite successfully. I believe that uh, here are three um, stages which I use at the lessons with students in two universities where I'm working on today. If we speak uh, about this, first at the High School of Economics, uh, teamwork is an everyday reality. For instance, in the Moscow Teaching University, 
a team practice um, is not very is not very popular, but uh, lessons we can practice team. Uh, we students can uh, write their thesis together in Um, translators, um, journalists, they write their thesis together as a team. Since they have different art projects and different creative projects, and they just differentiate their roles and they make uh, a product. At the first stage, they join together uh, on their own, own volition. Next, they distribute roles. For instance, it is uh, editor, project management, terminologist, translator, and um, they all are um, translators, scientific translators, since um, there are a lot of uh, laboratories at the universities. Then they choose um, books that they want to translate. Um, I don't impose my will on them, but uh, the only condition is that uh, this text should not be translated by them, before them. Uh, next, we have a, a presentation of this project where they show uh, they are good ideas, they are bad ideas, uh, how they work, their problems. We do, we perform brainstorm and help them. And the next, uh, we defend uh, the project. I would like to say that uh, this project was uh, shown as a, a scientific and applied project. Uh, I ask my students to um, formulate it on the traditional paradigm, Imrat. Uh, thus, when students are presenting the final version of their project, uh, the idea, the result of their problem becomes very important. When they have translated the text, they understood that this text, um, there is a problem on English borrowing, uh, words that uh, should be chosen, they need to find style of pragmatics and they use this topic as theoretical heading of their project. They say that uh, we need to formulate working hypothesis, we need to find methods, and then uh, for uh, and then present the results. The applied project is realized uh, by, and then we and then I show the uh, the result of this tactical chain. First, we start together with Anastasia Volkova in um, the high school, school university. Uh, that will be our research topic. We will find what prof which problems we faced and uh, what how it works especially uh, in times of digitalization and uh, transferring of all translators online due to COVID-19 uh, restrictions. Uh, uh, during the research, we outlined the questions we need to open and then we can expand this project on um, our final thesis and if it is 
based on the translation of original text or some other data. I um, asked to proliferate it on the internet. We ask this project to be online and then we add this project to the portfolio uh, in order to make sure that when student is looking for a job he or she can uh, use it in their cv i will show you fast i have one minute uh, to show how it works Um, that's how it looks. That's one of the most relevant projects at uh, Moscow State Teaching University. That's their presentation. Uh, they speak about the structure of the project. Everything is open and accessible. We listen to each other. We ask questions. And we have the format of expert session. Next, the manager of a project uh, uh, shows us the project. He says how we choose this or that original. We tell more about uh, the people who wrote this text and next we move on the main problems that were identified by students. Each and every student uh, speaks about the problems she or he had um, regarding his or her role in this project and then we add uh, comments and um, make uh, and use um, different terminal term they say how they what they did for students and uh, how they managed to organize process together each and every student have their abstracts and uh, after that stylistic editor helps to make sure that this text is very cohesive and very and and sounds really great this is how it looks fellow colleagues and here they show how their translation can be used and 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 then i asked them to connect this uh, with this universities and publish the translation of this article they've made okay thank you colleagues i've managed to maintain this time thank you and now Let's open our cameras and we will discuss our problems. Maybe you will be listening to us somehow. We can listen it like this or another way. Okay, Olga, please. Questions to all the presentations. If we have time, I will ask later. Well, you no, no, I'm not looking for anything. If you wanted to ask anything, but you didn't have time to, please take my question, take my. Uh, uh, email and ask me. Okay. 
Wow, it is so. I have three moments recording my presentation. First, teamwork online. Um, how can we maintain teamwork online? Second question, uh, whether it uh, turns into the individual system in the times of pandemic. Next, did you ask your students, have you asked your students uh, feedback about the project based approach you proposed? So what is the feedback of students towards this problem? And third, how this students function in this project? Can it um, restrict his or her factor and then someone instead of getting a complex holistic education they get really partial experience of work i am a practicing a translator interpreter and uh, for me all these functions have been combined together i took on all of these roles This project management manager, it is the second role. Next, I haven't uh, made such research, but maybe you haven't heard. I don't impose my will on students. Students make their own choice. For instance, one of project was really easy for them. They took it about their family. And it will be very interesting uh, and easy. And when they started to study about that, I told them that you, you chose this topic yourself. You make your own choice. Next. Um, when it comes to online education, I need to mention two topics. First, we have individualization. And when we started offline this work, I had to explain them that they need to join team. Uh, first, not all of them want. Um, I want to translate this text. And uh, I explained them that even online, they will have to be a part of a team. So in the end, there is no one who I would like to say, I'm sorry for we don't work in team and only now we understand how important it was. So this teamwork is important. There are several formats in Google, Google Group, Google Document. They launch their own web chat. chat. They and I usually ask them, how often do you meet via Zoom? And how did you prepare? And they give back. And um, they, they defend their work. And they try to speak about the, their difficulties. They understood they are all different. Uh, it's very, very difficult to work in, in a team. So shortly, the, in a few words, this is what I wanted to say to you. Good afternoon, dear uh, colleagues. I'd like to speak about the copyright. It is obvious we may take any text for what do we do with the copyright? You mean translation of students? There are official translators of King. I see your point. We do not translate um, classical literature. As the original, we take a text, a recent text that was um, published on a, in a social media. This is not um, 
we do not text that take text that have like a well-known author, so we have never had a problem of copyright. This text was published uh, in the internet, and that is why we feel free to translate it. Some of my girls translated a text from the Washington University, and I suggested that you write to them. Uh, write to them. Um, we have a written a a Russian version of your text. Would you like to have it? And they they got really interested. Yes, thank you. I know that all foreign researchers are very concerned about the problem of copyright. Thank you. У меня вот в связи с последними событиями, прямо совсем свежими, вопрос. Вы как? Like a link between the developers and the academics community. I believe you see the consequences of adopting this document. I tried to read it briefly yesterday, and I could see that it has certain requirements about what uh, the person should know. And I see that in the majority of our universities, that the requirements did not meet with what people know in real life. And you realize that we'll have to change the curriculum and change everything. I will not speak now about the project in general. It said that it has, it's the, this text is a kind of a recommendation. So is it obligatory that we uh, adopt it? No, this is not obligatory. This a polyfunctional text and university may take only one function and um, maybe develop a master's program or it may not take anything. So this should be relevant for more than six years. This is obvious, but what will happen next, I don't know, we'll see in the future. Our goal is that everyone finds what he's interested in. Interested in. We should use um, and launch a new uh, cut of programs this is uh, important for for state companies and for um, educational institutions we try to save our colleagues who work um, online And this document is only gives only it will be only positive uh, influence for the education. Does it mean that the employers will um, will implement this document? Yes because they compiled this document. And, and I would like to know that this, in this standard, includes 60% of employees they don't have. And this is the goal of the reform. The employers should say to the sphere, members of the educational sphere, what they need, and we should adapt to their needs. Thank you so much, I see your point. Вопросы у меня в случае чего есть вопросы. Если вдруг ни у кого ничего нет, я могу задать вопрос, но не у меня. We have three minutes. 
and I I give them to you so that you can pose the questions. Olga Nikolaevna was speaking about the news discourse. And you mentioned that how do you speak, you translate in English Lugansk and Donetsk People's Republic? You said uh, the translator should take into account the situation, the context, but, but maybe it is. It may happen that the translator distort the sense and be not neutral. But the key goal of the translator is to remain neutral, both for interpreters, by the way, and for the translators. I think it is obvious. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. When it comes to Lugansk and Donetsk, of course, there are no special terms. They are usually called rebels. And as to the second question, of course, uh, this is an extreme example. But the point is transformation unnecessary uh, sometimes, and we should try to understand when. I try to uh, work with my students who work in the media. As, as we know, the policy, the politics and sanctions so we should take everything into account. May I say a few words in addition? You mean, you've never heard it in the news media, but once I had to translate our um, articles, some scientific articles, and of course, our political scientists speak about the use of these terms. And of course, sometimes both theories are possible. The Donetsk People's Republic. This is... So there are two variants. We, we did not speak about the news discourse. This is both about translation and transliteration. And our colleague Plashnika usually writes on his Facebook, giving us certain advice. Dear colleagues, we do not have any time anymore. We have 15 minutes to take a pause. Um, so I suggest that you join our in 15 minutes. Um, Thank you for your statements. Thank you so much.